Hey everybody, uh, this is going to be a fairly impromptu video because uh, no editing, no music. I just needed to share this thing with you because this thing is really cool. So uh, I wanted to get into character development because I uh, I want to design a superhero. And for superhero, I'm talking about the good old standard giant walking refrigerator, punch your face inside out, giant muscles sort of superhero. So this is the first time in my experimentation career that I actually need to uh, have a reference on good physique or uh, good anatomy and I have bought anatomy books in the past I have a shelf of anatomy books they're okay they communicate the information some of them contain some history some of them contain a little too much history I'd, I'd rather have some sort of a solid reference book uh, that allows me to know all the key points when dealing with anatomy this is where I came across uh, a book in one of the YouTube shorts for one of the channels that I follow that does like little tidbit of information in the span of one minute. They recommended a book called Anatomy for Sculptors. This thing is amazing. So full disclosure, I pirated this book. I downloaded it and I, the book cost about 150 Canadian rubles for like a paperback. I don't think it's even a hard copy, which, okay, let's, it's fine. Like they need to make money. I pirated it. I, this thing is amazing. I actually, when I started using it, I went straight to their website and I, I paid for the motherfucker. Although I bought the PDF version. Um, the PDF version is actually about 50 bucks, which I didn't, I didn't, I was amazed. Like that's actually fantastic value. This book convinced me to buy it. So I have a list of a few pages that I want to share with you. I'm not going to share the whole book, but I really want to demonstrate why this blew my mind so much that I actually, that I'm making this video right now. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. Um, okay. So take a look at this. Here is a depiction of the torso in six different, uh, perceptions. So we have the overall basic shapes the simplified uh, surfaces, we have line, the, the wireframe, we have the skeletal structure, the muscle structure, and of course the, the reference uh, skin sketch. And I'm pretty sure this is based off of a, a real photo. This is the image that I have been using while sketching out this dude here. This image alone is helping me to figure out what are these different bumps? Like I'm looking here, what are these different bumps? Oh. Well, these are, these are these muscles. Um, people say six pack because they expect to see three sets of muscles. And what they don't realize that there's another pair of muscles sliding under the pecs, which you don't tend to see, but they're there. Cause they're actually there. It looks like they're just over the rib cage. I believe that. Yeah. They're just over the rib cage. So what is this? essentially a six pack is actually an eight pack. I didn't know this, but now that I know that those two muscles are there, I can actually draw them. This book is chock full of this sort of imagery that reveals to you all sorts of things you didn't even know were there, which is something that I failed to find in a lot of other anatomy books. They will draw them, but very rarely do they point out. It's like, hey, you see that little dip? Well, that's actually a so-and-so and so. And that because if you don't know that it's there, how can you draw it, right? If you know that these two muscles are actually, these two bumps are actually muscles, not, you can't really draw it if you don't know that it's there or what it is. So this book, it just, it blew my mind. Almost every other, every other page just blows my mind. And the reason it's every other page is because every page has uh, an extension to the previous page. So, you know, it's not an argument. Uh, this page was really cool because it depicts, uh, it has a lot of these illustrations that depict you of how you might want to be avoiding to do it or what you might be doing it right now and why it is wrong. Like, for example, that the torso and the pelvis are at an opposite angle to each other, which is why this particular posture is what you see in superhero stances on concept art. Why they have that whole like thin waist, um, uh, ribcage forward, pelvic, pelvis back. Uh, and they always have that stance and that, that three quarter, uh, view. Well, this is the reason why, because this is actually how the human rib cage, rib cage is angled and how the pelvis is angled. 
they're just exaggerating that for the sake of, you know, make it be comic and cartoony. So if we keep going through this stuff, like they have this uh, huge, hugely detailed uh, line artwork depicting the uh, muscle volumes or muscle shapes, which is super handy, especially this on this page for the back. If you're doing 3D models of your characters, you're going to need to use the sculpt tool to sculpt out these volumes. The line work on these volumes, which is, again, this sort of work, you'll find it all over the book. It helps you uh, comprehend what are the volumes that you're actually working for, uh, working with. Even if you're not doing 3D, if you, even if you're doing two-dimensional drawing of a character, you still have to light it. So you have to have lights and shadows and crest shadows. So you have to have all those components. Well, how can you know where the crest shadow will go if you don't know what the shape of a muscle is? So again, this sort of stuff just absolutely blew me away. I think it was around this page that I said, you know what? This is worth it. Let's go buy the book. Um, uh, let's see. This, what was it that on this page that, that impressed me? They have a lot of... Oh, yes. Okay, this little thing. The fact that the muscles, uh, it, it shows you how the muscle is supposed to flow and what you want to avoid. This is one of those things that uh, you very rarely see in tutorials where they say what you're not supposed to do because you, you might not, you might do something, you might I, unconsciously think, oh, well, maybe it can be this way. Nope. There's a very particular way you're not supposed to do it. There's a very particular way you are supposed to do it. I think this is... Um, oh, man. I think I wanted to uh, to strip that particular page from this preview. Because I don't want to show too much of the book. It, it's absolutely phenomenal. This was a really interesting uh, piece of information. Which depicts the, the shoulder muscles. And how it wraps around and dips right here. When the hand goes over. So, it has a lot of these photos where the same muscle is depicted in different positions. It shows you how that muscle, that, that muscle stretches or caves in, where, how far does it reach, uh, from which shape to which shape does it flow. Uh, okay, don't scroll. No, we are going to be jumping to the pages. This was a, a fantastic place because you've ever, you, you've seen those, those images of uh, front views of heroes, right? Where this little muscle on the side is um, it's just always depicted. You're thinking, oh yeah, that's a, that's a neck muscle. Well, guess what? It's this giant monstrosity that flows all the way throughout your back. I didn't know that was that was a one complete thing. Now I do. Now I do, and now I can actually... Now that I know the shape, that this particular shape is there, I know what this shape is. So when I'm drawing my character from the back, or when I'm 3D modeling or sculpting it, I know what I'm supposed to be sculpting. And this is how these sort of anatomy books, especially this one, can translate into your 3D um, 3D studies, right? Okay, uh, let's keep going. So, 52. This was kind of a mind blower. So, these little waves, these little ripples, what's the first thing you think? Well, those, those might be ribs, right? Nope, those are not ribs. Those are muscles. Not only are those muscles, they're actually connected to the ribs. So I'm pretty sure at this point we can be pretty accurate that, uh, you know, this book is anatomically accurate. Uh, hopefully it is. Uh, so it looks like these muscles are connected to each individual rib. I didn't know that. I thought that was really fascinating. And now if I need to draw... Uh, uh, you know, a bare human character, uh, even if they're in, like, trousers or something, I know what these muscles are, and I can accurately depict them. This is its just one of those things that blew my mind. Absolutely. Okay, this was a really interesting one. It depicts a difference between a male and female body tilt. So the most important part, of course, as they're pointing out, is this uh, little muscle group. So on men... This little muscle group is so big that it ends up protruding when, you know, a male character tilts uh, their torso over. On a female character, it caves into a point. I had no idea that that's what it does. Now that I think about it, all the reference images that I've ever seen for male and female characters, they did this thing. I would usually just kind of copy that and say, oh, that looks really nice. 
I'm going to copy that little eh, eh shape without really understanding why that happens. This book is chock full of these things that says, hey, here's a thing that happens. Here's why it happens. So now that you know, you can incorporate it into your drawing um, consciously, right? It's your uh, actual decision, your artistic knowledge that drives these design choices. All right, let's keep going. We're almost there. Okay, this was a really interesting one. Um, it uh, depicts the abbreviation of the shape of a head in three simple shapes. Now, practically, the way this could be applied is if you're 3D modeling your head um, in, in the Maya or Blender or whatever, you can start with these three shapes. You can use a modifier to um, unify them using the union union modifier and then go into sculpt mode and then stop sculpting with this starting shape. So again, I probably would have started with just a sphere or a cube, but um, this actually, actually, I just realized that I can do that. Um, God, what was I doing? I was, I, I would usually start the head with, with like a sphere and I would try to extrude the back of the head and the jaw. This is like, it's awesome. That's why I like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I lost for words. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I don't make these sort of videos, uh, usually uh, this one was a really cool discovery. So the top of the head, it's not a circle. It's not an oval. It starts wide and it becomes thin. Now this could be an important reason why if you went in to start, uh, and start modeling a head, uh, in sculpting mode, you might find that, um, the head looks weird. Like for some, whatever reason, why does the head look so weird? You might put all the detail you need in the eyes, in the nose, in the mouth, in the jaw, in the whatever. It might still look weird because that fundamental shape is missing. That uh, that uh, triangulation, uh, triangular shape. So, again, I didn't know this. Now I do. And now when I'm modeling my characters, I will be sure to implement this little tidbit of knowledge. Uh, this was really useful for when you're just starting out um, modeling. It tells you what major shapes you need to block in and, and start uh, going small and small and small in detail to hone in on an eye. And there's a, f there's a lot of these step-by-step uh, uh, -step images as well. And uh, let's see, 113. Oh, this was just an absolutely phenomenal discovery. This made me realize how much a human body is like a machine of different mechanical principles. So... Apparently, apparently, the way our jaw works is that your skull has a goddamn hole on the side that's made out of bone. And through this hole, you have muscle. There's a giant ass muscle on the side of your face, on the side of your head. That is it. it this giant muscle is what gives you that bite pressure that allows you to chew through a thick steak or, you know, an apple or something. Something tough, a nougat bar. So this giant muscle threads through this hole on the side of your sh of your skull, and of course it, it gives you all of the uh, all of the surfaces to abbreviate the skull, and then it threads in and it connects to the jawline. And it also says that there's a hinge right here. Well, what the hell is this hinge? Well, apparently, that's the hinge. There's a a, a cavity in the skull, and the jawline has this uh, this pointy bit that goes into that cavity and then acts as a hinge. Literally an organic hinge. So, I never knew how a jaw worked. I have anatomy books. I didn't piece it together. It, it was there, but it wasn't really, it was never pointed out that, hey, this is an axle. So, this is why this book has really, really impressed me. So, they have a hard copy, they have a, um, paperback and they have a pdf honestly the pdf is like 50 bucks it's worth it especially if you want to be you know indie game developer trying to do humanoid characters this is like getting a rocket shoved up your ass and then skyrocketing you all the way to like taking a college course in in uh, um in anatomy and life drawing highly recommend this is Phenomenal. So, last page. Uh, what was on the last page? 
Oh, yes. Okay. This was a, yeah, there we go. This was a really interesting. So again, what do we have here? It's a little tiny tidbit of information that the bottom lip is slightly further back than the top lip. And the fact that this bump and this bump is slightly further apart than this bump and this bump on the upper lip. So it's these little details that this book shines a light on that you will now be aware of and you will incorporate it into your drawings. And it's it's subconscious. Like when you look at a human, you see these details, but you don't pay attention to them. They're just there. But we've memorized them. We know that if they're not there, it will look weird, right? It's going to get into the uncanny valley. Everybody has this thing. So paying attention to these little details uh, is what this book does. It, it, it's just chock full. There's 230 pages of just raw secrets of the human anatomy. And it goes from from ba from overall shapes to fine details to to find little um, find little important tidbits you have to pay attention to if you want to make sure that you have an accurate character. So uh, I'm not going to make this too much longer because I think I've communicated pretty well of what this this is. Um, highly recommend go to uh, let me go to page one Anatomy for Sculptors. They have three books there. Anatomy for Sculptors, they have another one with facial expressions, um, which I also bought. Uh, and I think they have a third one. I think it's like face and neck or something along those lines. So I hope you uh, you find this useful. Um, this I definitely, so far, I am finding this absolutely phenomenally useful. All right. See you next time.